All right, guys, welcome to this rough and ready slapdash paint job tutorial video thing that I've made for this uh, dropship. I've um, decided to paint this one up first because it's uh, it's, a, it's a good test bed for the scheme. Basically, I was gonna go for a studio scheme, as you'll see. Um, I used Vallejo's grey uh, primer through the airbrush, and it worked really, really well. So, if you have it, uh, I would recommend uh, using it. Um, yeah. Um, at, at this part of the uh, painting is actually I'm doing some pre-shading. I'm basically painting black <clears throat> lines roughly where I want shadows to appear after I do the top coat. Now, um, the paints I'm using to do this is a black acrylic ink because it flows really well and has a high pigment count so you can turn your air pressure down on your airbrush and really get in close but to stop it being super glossy I also added um, matte medium and um, a few drops of that with the uh, the mixture and as you can see it goes on really well I'm, I'm right up there close and I'm just sort of blasting in little just black shadows basically you don't need to be neat and you'll see um, how this will come through in the next section um, so any bit models like this work really well for this technique because it's basically an aircraft. This is the, the technique you tend to use on uh, big aircraft model kits and that kind of thing. So uh, this is small, but it it has you know enough flat surfaces and lots of panel detail. So <clears throat> I recommend doing it if you if you have an airbrush. So I don't know the exact colours that the studio used. I'm basically designed to paint it the studio scheme. As you can see, I had a model air sand yellow colour. <clears throat> And you can see the uh, the pre shading coming through there quite nicely. Now, as you spray in, it might look like you've completely covered that pre shading. None of it's coming through. But as that paint dries, trust me, it will come back. It will come back a lot more than you you might expect. So I had to do a couple of coats of this <clears throat> between the three different uh, 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 drop chips. Uh, so it's basically you spray it on. It looks like it's completely covered. Let it dry. Come back later and add another coat. See, this is me doing another coat. Um, uh, and, and the other thing is, it, it, the effect really comes through much better in person than it does on the um, on the camera. But the basic idea is, it just it ha it's a very subtle effect. You'll have this subtle shading. You can see it very well at the back of the dropships, actually, more than at the front. <clears throat> and the next step will um, accentuate that and lighten the color because overall, the sand yellow was a nice color, but it was a bit too dark. So I'm just using a bone white there model uh, game color. And I thinned it. In fact, I thinned it a bit too much in this section, and I had a bit of problem, a bit of problems look with it um, spidering when it hit the uh, the model rather than sticking to it. So I had to play around. But basically, I got there in the end. But all I'm doing is I'm I'm airbrushing inside the panel. So I'm really sort of um, pushing the contrast. I've got the shadows around the panel lines, and I'll, and then the base color, and then I've got this in in between the panel lines. But it lightened the whole model up, the whole tone of the model, uh, brightened up a bit. It's much more like the studio scheme, um, but also different in its own way. It has, it almost looks a bit more weathered than the uh, the the studio scheme. But uh, in the end, you'll see it, it looks quite nice, and I like it. <clears throat> so yeah, the general idea here is I just wanted to paint the the um, paint them up as simply as possible. You know, no no frills just get them done make them look really nice because I imagine this is the kind of game where you you want lots of stuff and you don't want to be bogged down having to go around highlighting you with a brush around all the panel lines and stuff I mean by all means you, you can if you want to but I didn't as you'll see this is a pretty pretty cheap paint scheme really uh, cut a few corners essentially so there you go you can see the effect there you know if you compare it to the previous part of the video um, it looks really nice, and it's only going to look nicer when we uh, we get a wash on to to bring out those uh, panel lines that that really push the contrast up. So there you go. I am um, I've had the engines off obviously, and I'm just doing them separately. Um, very quick and easy. I got the mixture right in the end. Basically, I just over thinned the paint. I needed to thicken it up a bit. <clears throat> So 
So this is obviously the first of the, um, a couple of painting videos. I'm going to paint the others. So if, if anyone has any preference on what, what miniatures they want to see painted next, be it the battle walkers or the infantry or the tanks, just let me know. And speaking of tanks, actually, um, I, I did get the replacement parts for the um, the tank turret, which, uh, which is very nice. So if you do get any of these and you do have any problems, just contact them and I'm sure they'll help you out. So at the moment, I think I'm just applying a gloss coat in preparation for the washes and just to protect this uh, brush, well, this airbrush work I've done. So if I've made any mistakes now, I can probably carefully remove it with a bit of alcohol and not damage the underlying paint. So this is a uh, probably one of the most time-consuming parts of the uh, the pieces. Uh, just painting in all the metal work. Um, basically, these are covered in metal, especially the underside. I'm using uh, Vallejo's model uh, Chrome. Um, which if anyone has uh, any of the Vallejo Model Air metallics would know, uh, they just cover really well and they have a really nice metallic finish. It's not sparkly, it's very smooth and chrome and steel are my favourite, so, but I decided to go with chrome with this one. Um, and I'm just going around picking out all the silver details, I'm sort of referencing uh, some of the pictures on the Hawk War Games website uh, to try and get this right. I probably didn't quite get it perfectly accurate but you know I got there in the end but basically you know it's a, you've just got to be careful <clears throat> if you don't make any mistakes and you follow this sort of method you know you can always get um, some um, isopropyl alcohol or some sort of uh, strong alcohol and just very carefully brush around where you've sort of overpainted and you can sort of lift off the paint and get it off again without damaging that nice airbrush work you did so as you can see look the bottom is completely covered in, in metal I think in future because at this stage I, I only took one dropship to this level the other two are still not painted up past the airbrush work but I think what I'll do is I'll mask off um, those wings on the bottom and the front and generally just airbrush the area first with the metallic air because it will just make it so much quicker and then I'll take the masking tape off and then finish off all the little details that you know I couldn't mask off there's no point trying to mask off all those intricate bits around the wings there and basically that's kind of what it looks like underneath just one big block of metal and obviously you can go in and you can maybe do different types of metal or you know you don't have to paint it anything like this but I was just going for this rough and ready quick and easy uh, paint job that looks good so I just thought I'd uh, add this bit where I'm just painting some of the finer details you just got to be very careful uh, to paint these little wires and uh, struts and things underneath the the wings um, basically it just makes all the difference really it just adds an extra little bit of detail so yeah as I was saying before if anyone's got any preference on what kind of video you'd want to see painted next just let me know because I haven't I haven't touched any of the miniatures yet they haven't even been primed um, I just thought I'd start with the dropship because it just looked the most fun to paint I could uh, nail down the, uh, the method really of painting them so here I'm just painting some of the engines. Uh, you just got to be careful as you go around. You can see I'm sort of doing it blade by blade because I didn't want to just get silver up the inside walls of the engine. I wanted to keep them the nice sandy beige colour. I only really wanted to paint the blade. So a bit, bit of time, a bit of patience there just going around uh, getting them all. I, I didn't worry too much about getting all the paint right into the recesses here because I knew a bit of wash is going to go in there and end up completely obscuring all that anyway. So it doesn't... In fact, even the primer didn't go quite inside underneath those blades so I wouldn't worry about them uh, very easy just slapping some metal down on the engines for detail now here's a fun bit so this is a uh, Vallejo's liquid metal uh, range liquid gold range even uh, but this is their copper paint and I hadn't had a chance to use it yet as you can see it covers really well and looks really really nice so I was just adding this to the engines um, basically it's, it's not quite the same as the studio scheme but yeah, I think it looks pretty cool <clears throat> there you go see a nice big close up there one cut I didn't even have to undercoat it now this is an interesting step I, I, I've started to like doing this is uh, using GW's washes specifically this is bad black in this case to shade the metal by airbrushing it now you've got to what you've got to do. You've got to be really careful. You can't just push the airbrush all the way back. You've got to be very careful the amount of paint you let in out of the front of the airbrush. 
but because it's such a gradual effect um, and you're spraying it very fine it dries very quickly it's not like you're it's not like when you're using the wash normally where you're putting it on you know slapping it on letting it flow into the recesses and then dry naturally um, and shade it this is literally i'm just blasting it on but very sort of carefully it's drying pretty quickly and it just tints really well and i've used this to tint uh, miniature colors to, uh, you're making them more like using a blue wash to make them slightly a bit more blue and it works really well on the metal so that's what i did on the underside to shade some of the metal areas um, now I've decided to, uh, after doing that, I've um, got to do an oil wash. Now I'm mixing a black oil and a brown oil paint to make a really dark brown. Um, I'm still not, ma I'm not hundred percent confident in my oil washes. Um, I never seem to quite get the mixture right, or or I put the oil wash on, it looks great, and then after it dries, it hasn't quite dried in the recesses like it should. Um, so if anyone's got any advice or any comments about that, and they want to let me know how they do it, that'd be great. Um, I'm thinning the wash here with uh, odorless turpentine by the, the same company that made those particular oil paints. Now I know that some people, they say use mineral spirits. Now I'm not sure what mineral spirits are because, well last time I looked in the DIY shop, I had a choice of uh, white spirits um, and turpentine substitute, which I believe is just basically what the odorless turpentine is I've got here and obviously methylated spirits and they're the only ones I, I could see so I don't know if I'm, they just didn't have mineral spirits or if mineral spirits is what um, we <clears throat> we would call white spirits so if anyone's got any uh, answers to that that'd be great because I'd like to try different ways of thinning it because I'm wondering if that might help um, but in any case it seemed to have worked quite well on this um, it's a shame that I'm all sort of zoomed out over here but if you, you can sort of see that you, you touch the wash uh, down and it will just quite happily follow you know use capillary action and just flow all around the panel lines and it's really really cool um, and then all you've got to do is wait a while for it to sort of um, dry off a bit now it's, no, it's never going to truly be dry unless you leave it for a very long time but you can dry off enough to the touch and you can um, just wipe it off um, in fact usually you would use like um, a cotton bud um, dipped in some of the thinner that you used to sort of wipe off the recess because it's such a big model it's very smooth there really wasn't that much cleanup needed to be done and I just wiped it off with my finger I was just going around just smudging off the uh, the oil, oil that I, I didn't want or wasn't in the place I wanted now this is a brown wash what I didn't record was um, I made a black wash afterwards so I waited a day and cleaned it up and then the next day I used the black wash um, on the metal area specifically just to sort of darken them up now this is the final piece so I haven't recorded the extra little details and there really isn't many but basically what I did is I did a very light dry brush of the chrome again on the metal parts on the underneath just to make them pop a bit after the black wash I did I also um, painted the little lights there's little um, little colored light uh, around the model in blues and greens and reds um, and yeah greens blues reds and oranges now on the studio models these are painted like your typical you know uh, gem lenses you know it's that kind of uh, technique and I've got other videos on how to do that but I just didn't want to spend the time really painting such tiny lights and doing the whole gem effect I just basically just got a colour on there and then highlighted it up towards the centre just to get those uh, coloured lights done and to be honest at this scale it really it, I don't think it's that big of a deal and it looks really nice anyway as I said I'm just trying to get these done pretty quickly but still have them look good. Um, I also, when I did the silver dry brush, I dry brushed on the copper areas as well, um, which brought it a bit more in line with how the studio ones looked, and I think it just adds a nice touch. But yeah, I'm really happy with this, um, the way it came out. It's a very, very easy paint job. I mean, in total, I think it was only really two, three hours of actual work. Um, there was a bit of wait in between, um, you know, the oil washes, letting them dry a bit, and obviously just... Uh, coming back to it because uh, I was only doing this in the evenings for for an hour or so each time so it took it took a little while in real time but from a work point of view if you've got nothing on you could do the same thing in a, in a day probably especially if you've got a hairdryer and you can dry off the um, the oil paint I see I've attached the stand the the stand thing that little transparent blob in the middle which is a uh, very handy because it means you can attach it to the base and nice and snug without having any problems with it wobbling um, just a bit of super glue there. Um, I also super glued the other parts on, obviously. 
And and then I finished off the whole thing with a satin uh, varnish from Vallejo, just so it's uh, it's not quite matte, but it's not quite glossy either. And I think it um, again, I think it came out really nice. I'm really happy with this. Um, slightly different to the studio scheme. I've obviously not gone around and edge highlighted things, but to be honest, I don't think it needs it. I think maybe the infantry and the walkers might, but I think I might save that just for the infantry. So there you go. Hope you liked it. Uh, comments, questions, put them below. See you till next time. Bye bye.